Koreans say that there is a rabbit-making dog in the moon. The moon is a utopian dream, and the dog inside represents abundance. In autumn, the sound of women pounding dok signals an abundant harvest. Dok has always been a special food in the lives of the Korean people. It comes in all shapes, colors, and flavors. To Koreans, dok is more than just food. It's a symbol of giving and a way of sharing affection. Join us as we explore the world of duck. Hot and steaming duck reveals its soft white insides and signals that it's ready. The aroma of the steaming duck is enough to have mouths watering. Compelled by the scent, everyone heads toward the duck store. Dok offers a rich flavor at a low price. The rice cakes may seem small, but they are a hearty way to fill the stomach. <laughs> Korean dok conveys hospitality. Wherever there is dok, there's a convivial atmosphere around the people. Small rice cakes that offer big joys. Dok is a symbol of abundance in its very essence. You know, at its very essence, duck is boiled rice or glutinous rice powder. And it's really prized for its chewy texture as well as a sweet and savory flavor. And as a result, it's become an inseparable part of Korean people's lives. It's also widely available and relatively inexpensive as well. And over the years, Koreans have ascribed meaning to this little piece of duck right here. Let's find out what values duck symbolizes. Injolmi is a regular menu on special occasions. It's one of the most common types of dok in Korea because it's easy to make. Steamed glutinous rice is pounded into a dough, cut into bite-sized pieces, and coated with bean flour. As tasty as it is simple, Injolmi has the hearts of Koreans in every region. Chewy, sweet, and savory, Injolmi is a treat for the taste buds, but also for the soul, since it tastes better when shared. A taste created by joint efforts. Korean duck culture embodies the importance of sharing. This is why dok is intentionally made in large quantities, so that it can be shared with the whole village. For Koreans, dok encapsulates the entire gamut of emotions, from joy to sadness. And Koreans will share their dok as they share their news together, both good and bad. So my tray is empty, but I feel great about it because it's better to give than it is to receive. But back to the question of why people share duck when they share news. 
how did Duck take on this mediating role? Duck plays an important role in the life of every Korean, from birth to death. On a baby's first birthday, the table is set with Beksolgi for health and Susupat Gyeongdang to ward off evil spirits. At weddings, people prepare Chui Guldok and Gyeongdang to wish the newlyweds a happy marriage. And after moving houses, Patshirudok is given to the new neighbors as a sign of friendship. Sharing dock is a standard way of spreading news. From the moment dock is made to the moment it's distributed, people come together to share their joys and sorrows. Dock represents a wish for all to be free of misfortune. Which is why duck is the first gift that comes to mind when Koreans want to show appreciation. In Korea, duck is more than just a meal or a snack. It symbolizes wishes for a pure, long life that is free of misfortune and evil spirits. Duck has always been with Koreans through happiness and sadness. Throughout the centuries, Koreans have developed literally hundreds of different types of duck. But the varieties of which your average person knows of probably only comprise the smallest fraction of that. Then, what are the origins of Korea's colorful duck culture? The origin of duck coincides with the onset of the agrarian society. Ancient artifacts suggest that Koreans have been grinding and steaming grains from that time. The steamers, called shiru, that were discovered at the Najin Chodo site from the Bronze Age, look almost identical to their modern counterparts. It was from them that the grains were ground with stones and steamed in shiru. This is the first dock the forerunner of today's shiru dock. With the advancement of agricultural technology and cooking methods in the Joseon dynasty, dock culture entered its renaissance. The cookbooks that were written from the 1600s demonstrate how dock evolved, both in terms of variety and cooking methods. According to a text from the Joseon dynasty, dok was made more colorful by garnishing it with fruit. Dok culture flourished in royal palaces and noble families. Preparation methods diverged according to the function and significance of dok. Shiru-dok is the most basic kind of dok, with the longest history. Rice is pounded into fine powder and piled in layers, alternating with red beans. Then, the dok is steamed in a shiru. The best-known varieties are pat shiru dok and bekselgi. Symbolizing a good fortune, these dok are present at any major family event. But the most popular type of dok is dobyang, which is pounded dok. Dobyang stretches like cheese and is beloved for its chewy texture. <laughs> 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 
grains are steamed whole or made into dough and pounded with a pestle. The soft and chewy texture of dobyang depends on the efforts of the person making it. Dobyang is largely categorized into injolmi, joltian, and garetok, and is served to strengthen relationships or to give encouragement. Danja is made by mixing grain powder with hot water and boiling or steaming the dough. It's characterized by coating the dough with garnish. The garnish differs by the region and the time of the year. What makes danja appealing is its versatility, the way it can adopt different flavors according to the garnish. Jundyang is made by frying a watery, glutinous rice dough. When the dough starts to cook, filling is placed on top, and the dough is folded over. Jundyang combines the characteristic chewiness of dok with the crispiness of fried foods. In royal palaces or noble families, Dok was offered at ancestral rites and on special occasions. It was made with a wide variety of ingredients and recipes. So, Dok developed both in terms of nutrition and taste. So it might not look like it at first, but what I have in front of me would actually be considered a full meal by some. Many Koreans will often eat dok instead of the traditional steamed rice with their meals. And when it's eaten with the traditional side dishes, such as kimchi, it gives you that full Korean experience and also makes it easier to digest. The main ingredients of dok are common rice and glutinous rice powder. Supplementary ingredients add flavor and nutrition. The rice provides starch, and other ingredients like nuts, fruits, and vegetables add color and flavor. Still, there are some nutrients that duck cannot provide. So, when duck is eaten with other foods, it gets a nutritional boost. Pachiru <laughs> duck with dongchimi and kimchi, or gare duck with grain syrup, will help with digestion. Drinking persimmon punch with songkyan or quince tea with injolmi increases the anti-oxidizing activity by 40%. Adding vegetables like mugwort or dried squash to dock will supplement various vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Beans add essential amino acids. Also, they have genistein, which acts like female hormones and helps menopausal women. Sesame seeds add essential fatty acids. Dok is packed with nutrition. In Korea, there is a special type of dok that enriches the diet as well as the significance of each season.
Koreans begin each new year with dok. In particular, gare dok is a favorite for New Year's celebrations. To make gare dok, common rice powder is seasoned with salt and steamed before being pulled into long bars. The long shape represents long life, and the white color represents untainted health. For New Year's, people prefer to have dry gare dok. The long gare dok is chopped into coin-shaped pieces, which represents wealth in the new year. These pieces go into dokguk, or rice cake soup. Every household has its own recipe for dokguk. The broth is made with chicken or beef, and garnished with egg pieces, beef, and seaweed. This is the first meal of the year for most Koreans. The whole family comes around to eat dokguk while wishing each other a happy year. Koreans believe that you must eat dokguk to grow a year older. This is the only kind of dok that has maintained a long history as a formal meal. In autumn, Koreans celebrate the year's harvest on Chuseok, the Thanksgiving holiday. Women in each family come together to make songpyeon. They grind the freshly harvested rice to make the dough. Similarly, the filling is made with newly harvested crops. The shape of songpyeon is considered a measure of women's skills and virtue. The amount of filling inside demonstrates a woman's generosity. And beautiful songpyeon is said to bring women good-looking husbands and pretty daughters. Songpyeon is steamed with pine needles that infuse their scent into the rice cake. Songpyeon celebrates an abundant harvest and prepares Koreans for winter. Dok has been a part of life in Korea for many years over the changing seasons. Now, it begins a new transformation. In modern times, Dok is a treat for all Koreans, young and old. One popular dok dish is topoki, made by cooking slices of kare dok in chili pepper sauce. It's the favorite snack of many Koreans. Sweet and spicy topoki can easily replace a regular meal. That is a huge punch of flavor. Mm. Now, dokboki's got this great balance of flavors. They're salty, sweet, spicy, and bitter. And one can actually say that that balance is actually kind of reflected in the personalities of Koreans. Now, it's actually a relatively new dish, but it's already become a global phenomenon. In the past, dokboki was primarily a street food. But now, it drives some rapidly growing franchises. 
In 2012, the domestic topoki market was worth approximately $2 billion. What began as a delicacy for Chosun kings has evolved into a snack for the masses. Topoki was originally seasoned with soy sauce, but it switched to chili pepper sauce in the 1970s. And now, the Hallyu boom is carrying topoki to all parts of the world. In recent years, dok has undergone yet more transformations, capturing the hearts of diners with new colors and flavors. Nicknamed Korean bread, fusion-style dok is challenging cakes and cookies in the Korean market. Many Koreans now opt for traditional Korean tea and dok instead of coffee and cookies. The appearance of dok has changed with the times, but the flavor and value it holds have continued untouched. Duck has long been part of Korea's history, and it'll continue to evolve in step with changing tastes and social climates. But one thing will remain the same. Duck brings people together. After thousands of years, Duck still remains embedded in the lives of Koreans. By sharing dok, Koreans share their kindness and enrich the foundation of life. The Korean spirit is ingrained in the wide variety of dok. A plate of dok represents the four seasons of the year, the Korean emotions that change with the seasons, and the nature of Korean hospitality. Chewy, soft, and sweet, dok is a delicious and meaningful food. Why not share some dok with your loved ones today?